Well, welcome to day number 162. Eric Rhodes here from Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine, and also from Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. Ann Brown, welcome, Ann. Thank you, Eric. Ann oh. is an expert in marketing art. Uh, tell us uh, briefly about your career in art, and then we're going to hop off, do some announcements, and come back. I spent almost 20 years in the advertising business in Providence, Rhode Island, New York, and Cincinnati, Ohio. Then I was forced to move to Southern California and <laughs> to the community of Laguna Beach, where I was finally able to take my fine art degree and start painting. And I was a wildlife painter for about 15 years and in a community where you just opened your studio and people came in and bought things. So I thought that's the way art sales went. And then I moved to Utah where I learned, yeah, that's not the way it went. <laughs> and, and I actually had to start advertising, <laughs> and, um, which led me to Plein Air Magazine because I started a Plein Air event in Zion National Park, bought ads in Plein Air Magazine got a job with Plein Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur, and that was 10 years ago. It's been 10 years already? Almost. Wow. Thank you. Scary. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe nine. Nine, nine plus. Nine and change. Well, nine and we're going to, uh, what are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about knowing what you're good at um, in your art career, how you're going to market that, that you are good at through advertising, your website, social media. What are your goals? What are your goals that you want to achieve okay. in your okay. art career? All right. Terrific. Well, we're going to get right back to that in just a minute. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur Plein Air Magazine, as I mentioned. And today the sun is shining. It's it, it, Yesterday, it seemed like it was fall had begun or winter had begun. It was cold and gray and awful. And I feel just great when the sun comes out and, and the sun is out. You want to see? I'll do it for you. I'll uh, do it. Wait, actually, there's a boat going away. Can you see that boat? No. Anyway, it's a beautiful day <laughs> in the neighborhood. Uh, so I have uh, been flooded with birthday greetings. My birthday was Sunday and the mail up here in the Adirondacks, uh, especially when you live essentially on an island and you have to get everything by boat, it's very difficult to get things like packages and mail and it takes a little longer. So I got some things in the mail. I just want to show you real quickly. First off, um, I got a, a ton of cards, which I'll show you in a minute, but this is from uh, Judith Slaughter. It's a beautiful little study that she sent me. And it's got a, it's a postcard, but it's really beautiful. And it's a, I don't know if it's oil or gouache, what it is, but it looks beautiful. I also got this. Uh, this is a very clever COVID painting. It's basically a lot of little things about what's happening in COVID as kind of a reminder. It's a, it's a watercolor. It's from Shirley Acres, and it's just delightful. It's a lot of fun. Also, this came in today. This is, uh, see if you can see it. This, it's hard because of the reflection, but this came, there it is. This is from Katrina, Katrina Gorman. She said I was interviewing Mario Robinson, Mario Robinson, and that I had this really interesting look on my face. And so she captured that. And this is a pencil drawing. It's getting a little washed out there. Maybe you can see it a little better, but anyway, nice job, Katrina. I've known Katrina since she was a little girl. And, uh, and uh, our parents were good friends with one another. Anyway, so thank you for, for everyone. And then I have a pile of birthday cards that I uh, have got to open. And uh, thank you for those. And uh, also got a nice little book in the mail, The History of the White Mountains, because we're going up to the White Mountains. And that's a uh, thank you from Elaine Miller. Elaine is also the one who sent me the birthday cake. So thank you, Elaine. And this came in the mail today. This is a book that is a gift to me from Richard Whitney. Yes, the Richard Whitney. 
called Painting the Visual Impression, and I'm very much looking forward to this. Whitney studied with Ives Gamble and uh, has really kind of captured the things that Gamble taught him. And I read his last book and I enjoyed it so much, I called him and introduced myself. And uh, anyway, he sent me that book, so that's lovely. What else? Well, what else is, uh, first off today, every day at three o'clock, we're giving you videos uh, samples of videos that we have done so that we can keep you occupied, interested, growing, and uh, maybe you can learn about art. Today, we have Bob Rome. Bob is an author of several art books, uh, books on painting technique. And when I saw those books, I went to Bob and said, you, you need to do a video. And so the, this video is called Harmonious Landscapes. And you can see the painting here. It's just lovely. And uh, so he's going to show how he did that. It's called Harmonious Landscapes. And you find that on YouTube or Facebook. And just search Streamline Art Video, and that's how you find it. Bob's also got another DVD out with us, another video. We do online and DVD, of course, Secrets to Successful Paintings. I learned so much from this one that I actually incorporated things into my painting that I had never done before because of what Bob taught me. And I'm still using them very, very helpful technique. So today you're gonna to see this, Bob Rome at three o'clock. I wanna mention that uh, Realism Live is continuing to grow. We've added another faculty member, Jesus Emmanuel Virial, and uh, he's absolutely incredible. And so he's gonna be joining the faculty and the faculty is getting bigger and bigger. Todd Casey, whoops, Todd Casey is gonna be teaching still life. Um, Cornelia Hearns is gonna be teaching. Stefan Bauman, uh, Jean Stern is going to be doing art history. Mark D'Alessio, the great plenary painter. And this, I think he's in, I need to find out. I think he's in Serbia. Uh, Tony Serenai is going to be giving you some painting techniques. William Schneider, Connor Walton from Ireland. Kathy Anderson, the floral painter. Uh, Kathy Odom is going to be doing landscape painting, more impressionistic. Jeff Legg will be doing still life. Daniel Graves from the great Florence Academy, the founder. This is a legend who's gonna be part of this. Victoria Herrera. Many of these people ended up being students of Daniel Graves. Daniel Gerhardt. Yeah, another, lots of legends. Juliet Aristides, author and atelier operator and artist and uh, another legend as is Daniel Sprick, as is Rose Franson as is Josh LaRock, as is Graydon Parrish. I mean, this is an absolutely incredible lineup and we are thrilled to have all these people on our faculty. And it's four days of painting instruction uh, plus a fifth optional day, which actually starts the day before it all, which is a beginner's day. And so uh, Realism Live is happening and uh, you can save 200 bucks if you register before the 30th of September. And so make sure you do that. It's taking place October 20th through 24th if you do the beginner's day too. And so that is at realismlive.com. So make sure to check that out. Uh, we have some winners today. Uh, today, day number 162, uh, the winner of the digital subscription to Plen Air magazine is Inger Sudberg from Sweden. All right, thumbs up and applause for Inger. We love it when people are tuning in from all over the world. We are one big family. We're all going through the same things. Uh, we are all dealing with the pandemic, and so it's nice to see the world coming together. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving away an easel brush clip, and I just took it out of the room because I'm going painting today. Yes, it's true. Uh, such a beautiful day. My buddy Judd Brown uh, is going to drive up to a halfway point. He's about two hours, four hours away. I'm about, uh, we're going to meet at a waterfall at about two hours away. It's called Buttermilk Falls, and it's near uh, Long Lake. And so we're going to paint there, paint the afternoon sun in Buttermilk Falls. It's going to be really a lovely day for that. And so I'm, I'm going to be blown out of here about four o'clock and getting down there about five and won't have a lot of time to paint, but it's going to be fun. A uh, reminder today at three is Bob Rome and Harmonious Landscapes. All right. So now we're going to get right to Ann Brown. And uh, Ann, welcome back. Um, 
we have so much to talk about. I, I get so many questions. And the reason I invited you on is because I cannot answer all the questions. Yes, I'm, I'm a marketing guy, but I, um, I just, you know, you've got all this experience in advertising and you've, you've dealt with literally thousands of artists and you're directing our, our uh, efforts to help all, all the artists. So we're going to talk about marketing today. Yes, we are. Are you up, are you up for it? I'm up for it. I'm up for it every day. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to ask you some questions and then um, maybe we'll kind of start there. Does that work? Well, absolutely. All right. So uh, a lot of times you'll get somebody will uh, send you an email, text, pick up the phone, and they'll say, I'm thinking about advertising. And what's the first question that you ask them? What are your goals? Everybody has a different set of goals in their career. It uh, could be that they're fairly new at this, and but they know they want to be a professional artist. And obviously, as part of the profession, one has to get their art out. So what are their goals? Um, do you want to be in galleries? Do you want to do different kinds of events? Um, and then as you go up the scale to professionals who've been in the business for decades and want to be in permanent exhibitions um, or permanent collections in a museum. So knowing what your short and long, long-term goals are is number one. And we have, I, I should just mention, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> ah, I should just mention because um, we have actually suggested to some artists that they're not ready yet to advertise and that, you know, the tendency in, in, in some industries, I'm not so much in our industry, but the tendency is somebody expresses interest, you know, people just jump all over them and yeah, 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 let's get their money. And we have a philosophy that a single ad is not going to get you anywhere because, you know, if you're not ready if you're not, if you're really not committed to marketing, the idea that a single ad, single ads work for very specific purposes, you know, especially events, but the idea of building awareness and so on. So we have actually uh, said to some people, listen, you know, let's, let's work on your goals. Let's work on some of this, or let's work on your, your process and think about doing this six months from now or a year from now, five years from now, whatever the case may be. Can you address that at all? Absolutely. Um, in, in all honesty, I think the, the group of people we have on our marketing team are so well versed on marketing art that they can go through someone's portfolio, as it were, um, their website, their social media, whatever, um, combination they have already and talk to them about their goals because a lot of people don't actually have that <laughs> written down <laughs> and um and so helping them form format what those goals are and then where they are in that stage of their art career are they actually capable of doing what they want to do goal wise we can kind of help them massage that to a point where whether it's immediate or whether it's six months or a year or whatever down the road. I uh, did a mastermind uh, for, for the VIP members of the uh, Plein Air Live. I did a mastermind group last Friday. It was, uh, it turned out to be about almost four hours uh, of actually working with people on their marketing very specifically. And the one thing that everyone had in common is they thought they knew their goals but as I would probe them and understand it further, everyone, every single one of them had their goals wrong. And so one of the roles that you guys are playing is helping people really understand what are my real goals? Because, you know, we, uh, we think that it's one thing. And then, you know, once it gets probed, you know, for instance, there are a lot of people who, um, who paint for recognition and they don't really need the money. And so, but they want to advertise for recognition, but they think they're advertising to sell art when in reality, 
they're really trying to get invited to shows or they're really, you know, so it's really important to, to understand those goals uh, very much. And I did a whole thing on goal setting, several of them throughout this 162 day period. And they're back on YouTube on the at Streamline Art video. You can find them and, the, and there's some things there, but um, how do you go through that process? What, how, how do you help them understand what, what they really need to be doing? Probably the number one objective that we have, especially with an artist that we haven't worked with before, is to look at their where their art is, which should be on their website. What I think we most find are are such diversity on someone's website, they're not actually creating a look. Um, everybody wants to create everything, you know, whether it's lots of different mediums or a lot of different subject matters. And to get ahead, you have to let that go. Um, you have to find something that you're comfortable with as an artist and pursue that, um, whether it's painting landscapes, painting animals, figurative, still life, whatever. Um, so that what you're showing to the world in on social media, on your website, in your advertising has a look that says, this is what I am as an artist. Um, particularly in the formative years of a career, it's critical that people can look at an artist and say, I know that work. I know that person's work. Um, that you have a look that is yours. And then, then it makes it so much easier to go after the right events, the right galleries, the right museums, whatever, um, because you have something, you have a statement to make. And, and that just ties into your advertising so perfectly. So you have uh, people who are watching you say that right now who are thinking, yeah, but I like to paint other things. <laughs> right. So are you, you're, what you're suggesting is go ahead and paint them. Just don't put them on your website. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I have myself, everybody on our team um, has spent countless hours with artists going through their predominantly their websites and saying, you know, look at these. I just did this the other day with someone incredible still lifes, but then they also had, um, you know, a few chickens, a couple, of, you know, just these random things that didn't have anything to do with still life, which in their case, their still lives were amazing. And so, you know, it's, taking those things that you're good at and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to concentrate on. You know, you can make as many chickens as you want <laughs> when you're not, when you're not, uh, just don't put them on your website. Don't put them on your social media. You know, you want to have a clear picture of who you are as an artist. I want to tell a story real quickly because I think this is, this kind of reinforces that. We had an advertiser, I don't remember the name, and it was about probably five or six years ago, so you probably will remember. Uh, we wouldn't use the name anyway, but this advertiser uh, was giving us a bit of a hard time because she didn't feel like she was getting any results. And I said, well, let's first off, let's look at the data. You know, ha have your website visits increased? And we looked at the data, there was a huge increase in website visits. And I said, okay, but you didn't hear from anybody. You didn't get any results. Let's go there. So I went to the website. And keep in mind, this woman was advertising commissioned portraiture, right? And beautiful work and commissioned portraiture. So we went to the website, and the first thing I saw was a landscape painting. And I thought, okay, I must be on the wrong lands uh, website. you know. And I, I checked. It was the right website. It was the right name. And then I thought, okay, now let's say I'm a little bit more tenacious than most people. I'll see if I can find the commission. Painting. And I went through layer after layer, page after page, and pay, until I found it. And then when I found it, you know, it, it was wonderful. 
But my advice to her was exactly the same thing. Is first off, there's a, a, a thing that I teach called follow the scent. And that is if somebody sees something in your ad, they need to see that the minute they go to your website. And, and I think, for instance, if, uh, you, you know, in this woman's case, I said, look, take everything else off your website. You know, if you want to have another website for, for all that, great. But if you're going to advertise, you want them to be able to go right to it because there's a fatigue that occurs. You know, people aren't that, you know, they're, they're not that uh, industrious, right? They, they look at an ad, they go, oh, I'll visit the website and they visit and then they don't find it. They're not going to go to the trouble of looking for it. And, exactly. and so uh, I remember an, another story, very similar story. And that is uh, one, of our, one of our big advertisers advertised a painting and I just was, uh, I was doing a seminar or something. And I, I said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this ad and I'm going to go to the website. And I went to the website and I couldn't find that painting. And finally I found it in the painting, uh, what, what had a red dot, it was sold. So I called the artist and I said, look, here's the problem. If you're advertising something, you have to scratch, they have to be able to scratch that itch. They need to be able to find it. So what I would have recommended is have it on the front page and, and say, this painting is sold, but click here to see seven others that are similar to this, you know, so that, that are similar in style. That particular one was a barn or something. So why not take them to seven or eight other available paintings that are a barn, but you've got to scratch that itch when you first go there. Is that right? Absolutely. And I think the, in going forward with that same concept is what you have in your ad needs to be similar to what you're showing on social media. Um, obviously you don't want to repeat the same image in social media constantly, but just as you're saying, same kinds of paintings um, or sculpture as well. But it it's critical that you follow that. And then when you change the ad, whether it's digital or print or both, then you have to change it on your website, which means updating your website. And I would say that more than 50% of the websites I look at, whether I'm looking at it with a gallery owner or if I see somebody new that I'm not aware of, let's say on Facebook, I'll look them up. And if I think they're like, oh my gosh, and I know a gallery that's looking for someone in that genre or in that medium, I'll call up that gallery and say, you've got to look at this website. But 50% of the time, so that's a lot of, of artists, have such back <laughs> backwards websites that they do not update. I mean, it is embarrassing for me to tell someone to look at a website that hasn't been updated since 2014 or whatever. It's, um, I mean, why bother? And the usual excuse I get is because somebody else created their website and they don't know how to update the images. Well, then you need a new website. <laughs> or, or, or don't have a website at all and, and do it on your Facebook page or something. But yeah, that's a, that's a huge issue. And it's an issue for us too. I, you know, people will send me notes and they'll say, uh, you need to consider this artist for the plein air convention. So this happened recently. I thought, okay, I went to the artist's website and I kid you not, it had not been updated for 12 or 15 years. It right. looked, you know, it, when I went to the website, it still had the button in the middle that said enter. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, we, we try to update our websites every three years minimum, but we try to update them every week. And, and there's an algorithm that Google uses right. that if you are not putting fresh content on there, if somebody Googles a term that you would normally fit into, they won't even show your website. Uh, right. So you're missing out on things because it, you, you've got to be constantly putting a new blog or new article or new image or something into your website to, to make that work. Yeah. And in fact, um, just the other day, I was talking to an artist, a very, a very good, well-known artist um, who told me that when she does workshops, she tells people in her workshop who want to be professional artists 
that they need to anticipate one day out of every five days they paint to plan on running their business, whether it's getting their photography done, which is a whole nother issue that drives us all nuts, um, is poor photography of art. Um, but, you know, the whole idea of inventorying where your art is, um, framing photography, website, social media, but she feels like for every five days she paints, she has to spend one whole day doing nothing but the business of her art. Well, that's what I teach as well, is, is take 20% of your time on a five-day week and, and work on your business and your marketing. I, I will tell you that the photography issue is a big issue. If, if you're going to be a professional, and by the way, we're not trying to lecture anybody here. It's just the experiences that we've, we've gone through. If you're going to be a professional, you have to be a professional. And that means you have to have really well done professional level photography, whether you do it yourself or you do it through somebody else. Right. I'll tell you a story. Recently, uh, there was an artist that we were going to feature in the magazine. And the images that they sent, the best that they had were so bad we couldn't run them. Okay. And, and so that artist lost out on an opportunity and it was a feature that we were doing on a particular topic, which we might not ever do again for a long time. And okay. so, uh, and it, you know, it was taken with their iPhone or something and iPhones can be pretty good for some things, but you know, they've got glare, they're not showing up where they don't look rich. And of course the biggest issue is the dots per inch. You know, if you don't have a high enough resolution, uh, you, your image isn't going to look good. And if it doesn't look good, we're not going to run it. Because we right. can't, you know, we can't risk our reputation uh, because somebody didn't do a good job in their photographs. So we, it's a lot easier just to pick somebody else who's got good photos. And not just editorial, but ads as well. I mean, um, we have to have the same good quality, high resolution images for an ad. And I, I think it's, it's equally important, particularly when you're when you're dealing with more three-dimensional, whether it's encaustic, um, which so many people are doing encaustic paintings now, um, and obviously sculpture. I mean, lights, shadow, all that, it, it can just destroy a good piece of art by not having good photography. Absolutely. So um, talk, talk to me about how do you know when your ads are working or not, because you you have situations uh, where, uh, for instance, in a print publication like ours, uh, you will sometimes not know what's secretly quietly going on in the background because there's not necessarily a response mechanism for that. I mean, not everybody's gonna pick up the phone or go to a website, but they are taking in information. Talk to me about that, because you run into this a, a little bit. Yeah, of course. Um, well, to me, obviously, if you're reaching some of your goals, be it name recognition, obviously, if you sell something from an ad, that's glorious. Not that that happens on a constant basis. But, you know, it's we have started doing some innovative processes with our magazines. Um, we're sending them out with a link um, on a, a digital platform. And uh, this current issue of Fine Art Connoisseur that just came out is going out to 400,000 people through links, um, through museums and different organizations like OPA, AIS and OAPS, um, et cetera. Um, and those all hyperlink to the advertiser's website. So, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of mix that up, um, especially right now where our, so many of our newsstands are, are closed. Um, so we've kind of added an innovative situation there. We're doing the same thing with this next issue of Plein Air Magazine. And we might be doing this for a while, we don't know. But, um, you know, we're trying to find those solutions that will help our advertisers. And, 
but the the bottom line is if you know what your goals are then we can help mo monitor those goals with you um if your goal is to get into a gallery in new england you know we can we can help you with those situations by making sure that that gallery that you want to get into has the magazines um and and they're seeing your ads i mean we don't just put make sure you get an ad in one of our magazines and then call it a day it's a whole process that we're partnering with you to get to your goals and thank heavens we have incredibly well qualified people on our marketing team that can do that but it's it's not just put the ad in the magazine and call it a day. There's a whole, there's a whole trail that we follow with our advertisers. Talk to me about um, um, big versus targeted. When I say big versus targeted, you know, so sometimes big numbers are seductive, you know, clearly with our issue with 400,000 people, that's seductive. But if those 400,000 people are, um, high school art teachers that aren't going to buy a painting. That's okay. I mean, we love them, but you know, ultimately depending on the goal, you know, the goal is to get into an agency, to get invited to events, to get to sell paintings, you know, whatever. And everybody should have one primary goal. That's your 80% goal. And because we all say, well, we want to do it all, but if you're doing it all, then your ad is, your ad's not going to accomplish anything, but if you're doing something specific towards that goal, your ads will accomplish that goal faster. Then you can, you know, later, once you've accomplished, you know, let's say name recognition, which gets you noticed, gets your, gets, gets collectors to know who you are, gets your prices up, you know, all of these things. So talk to me about target versus big. Well, to me, targeted, is got to be what you're trying to achieve um, because you've got to be able to check off. Yes, I've done this. Um, and most artists that I, I deal with personally, um, I feel like they have very targeted goals, um, very specific events they want to be in, very specific um, galleries they want to be in. Um, and so we're working towards those goals. They may have some very long-term big goals. Um, but, you know, a part of our job, I feel, is saying to someone, hey, why don't you apply to this? And they may never have thought of that particular they event. They may not even know it exists. Right. And, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons that, you know, we're here is to help create those goals um particularly when we when we can get an artist focused on what it is they want to achieve um and what they're most comfortable creating to get to that um then you know it's like a it's such a collaboration between what we know about and what um the artist is capable of doing you know, but it's an all in thing. Um, I think asking, John is asking, does John is asking, does this mentoring, uh, and, um, uh, does this mentoring by Ann Brown and staff have a cost to help with goals? I'm a season, I'm a seasoned citizen needing to restart a career after health and closing of galleries. So are, are you charging for this mentoring? No. No, um, because it's part of, it's part, uh, the end result for us is obviously selling advertising, but if we don't have the relationship that with a, an artist or a gallery or a museum or whatever, um, we can't, we can't get to that goal if we don't know about it. And so, yeah, it takes time. We have a, you know, we put in a lot of time with the people we work with. Um, you know, we, we aren't here just to, you know, 
uh, sell you an ad. It's because we want to know that we've achieved what it is you're trying to get to. So, I mean, there are people in the industry that um, you can pay to mentor you, um, both with your art and with your marketing. But um, and there and there there's some very good people. Yeah, there are absolutely. But um, you know, we have a we have a team of seven people who. Um, that's our job is to you know, help you be successful. It's interesting to me that I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I've got a little delay yeah. between us, but the um, uh, talking about agents and people who will help you, typically they don't want someone to be a customer unless they're already famous, unless they're already selling well. Right. And so it's, it's like, well, I don't even need them then. And of course you, you can, or you do, but the idea is that they're coaching you to the next level and so on. Is that right? Right. And I, and I, I'm glad that this person um, brought up being a, a seasoned person <laughs> as I am too seasoned. Um, but uh, I just Early. spoke to a, an artist last week who has been painting for only five years um, she's very seasoned and, um, she's excellent. Her, you can tell that she has spent a lot of time in the marketing field because her website is amazing. And she is, she's got a really good career going for only five years, um, as a, as a professional painter. And, um, and it was so great to, I asked her what her goals were. And the next day she sent me a two page <laughs> outline of her goals. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, it, I don't think you have to be 25 to start a career. You can, you can start a career at any time. You know, it's how much effort you want to put into it. And for a lot of people, this is, you know, this is a dream job, particularly during this pandemic where maybe they've changed um, their career goals. <laughs> um, absolutely. Advertising can overcome time. Everything takes time. And you see brands that have been brands, artists who are well-known, who are getting invited to the best shows or maybe don't even do them anymore. They're selling their paintings for big money. And some of these people have taken 30, 40, 50, 60 years to build their careers. And it's that repetition. They're still marketers. They're still out there. But you also have people who don't have 30 or 40 or 50 years. And they look at it and say, okay, I can't put in 50 years. But what I can do is I can add more energy to that advertising schedule. I can get you know, bigger ads, more ads, more frequency, uh, because those things overcome time. Absolutely. But, and I think the bottom line is that perhaps it's the wisdom of age <laughs> that you can say, you know, this is what I like to paint or sculpt. And that's, and I know that. And so now I'm going to, you know, because of maybe where I am economically, I can afford to do more advertising to get that going, that engine rolling a little bit faster. Um, you know, I can afford to have professional photography, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it does not diminish the amount of energy that has to be put into the business end of it. But, um, but I, I, I think people need to be encouraged that if this is what they want to do for a, a livelihood, um, it's possible at any age. Give me a story. Give me, give me, I, I know you can't use names, but give me the story of someone who uh, has, you know, th they've reached out, they want to build a career and you've coached them and said, okay, do these things. And then what kind of result were you able to get in what period of time? Um, there is a gal here in Montana where I live. You can always tell when people are in turtlenecks in <laughs> early September. <laughs> um, there's a gal that I started working with, mm, I'm going to say four years ago. Um, when I first looked at her website, 
she had some figurative. She, she it was all over the place. And I said, what, what do you really want to do? And she said, I love to do landscapes. And, um, and so she completely revamped her website. Uh, one of the things she, her goal was to be a member of the Tonalist Society, um, which didn't really even exist then. Um, it was sort of like, I want to paint like Russell Chatham. Um, and she wanted to, uh, there were some very specific galleries she wanted to get into. We started working together on what her look was going to be, you know, who she wanted to, what her story was. And um, she actually has her first solo show in one of those museums that's currently going on. I'm sorry, galleries. Um, she, and she is now a member of the Tonalist Society. She's selling her paintings, you know, anywhere from 2,500 to 10,000. Um, and, and I'm not saying it's because I told her what to do, <laughs> but, but it's I, because you told her what to do. Really, she made it her career. And she's a little bit older than me. Um, but she chose to like, okay, this is what I really want to do. And she is, you know, sh she's no longer going on vacations with her husband and <laughs> what have you, you know, she's made this a, a job and, and this is her profession and she's now very successful at it. Um, but I, I think it's a combination of, listening to advice, whether you listen to it on a video or something like this, or you talk to someone like me from our team, it's, it's all about how much effort you want to put into this and taking it seriously. Well, that's, that's kind of what it boils down to is willingness to work. Right. Yeah. So um, one of the things that's, that's kind of a, uh, maybe I dare say a little bit tarnished side of the whole industry is this concept of uh, you run an article if I buy an ad. You run into that once in a while. But what's the effect on the reader? I am very proud to say that since we don't do that with our magazines, either Fine Art Connoisseur or Plein Air, um, our, we are, from our point of view, from a marketing team point of view, we will take appropriate information about an event, about an artist, a museum, whatever. We'll take it to our editors and knowing that they have their schedules, their editorial calendars planned at least six months in advance, um, and sometimes up to a year, depending on the subject matter. And we'll, we'll take it to them and say, this is an artist that you really need to watch. Keep an eye on them um, in this medium or this genre or whatever. And our editors are marvelously organized and will save that information or if they have a solo show or something coming up. Um, so we will, we will help generate that editorial information um, where we, where it's appropriate. Um, but that is all our editorial end is um, in print. We are very fortunate that we have so many great, weekly newsletters, um, watercolor, uh, realism, um, fine art today, plein air today, where we can take to those editors something that's coming up in the very near future within the next month or two and say, oh, wow, you know, this group has this going on or this artist has this going on. And we can be a little more immediate with editorial content with them. Um, but it has nothing to do with how much you buy in terms of ads, um, where you buy your ads. Um, it's part of the whole goal setting and information exchange. Um, so obviously when 
when a person buys an ad or a series of ads or an annual contract of advertising in, in print and digital, we know what their goals are and what the subject matter may contain. So it's easy for us to send that information to the appropriate editors. But unlike pay to play, where you send an ad and a press release, as it were, um, to a magazine, and those are put together on the same page typically. Um, it's really obvious to me um, that the collector or any reader is going to know that that was not written by the editor. <laughs> it's um, It may be formatted to fit the space or edited down or up to, to fit a space, but it's not it's not written in the same, um, it, it's just not written the same way as what our editors would write. And I think it makes it more prominent to, um, to the collector and the reader to say, wow, yeah, it's really obvious. I mean, we separate physically in our magazine advertising an editorial. It's it's very obvious that they're not one in the same. You know, I think that uh, from my standpoint, I'll, I'll just tell you a quick story. Um, I had another magazine years ago called Streaming Magazine, at very early stages of streaming. And the guy that worked for us in the ad sales team says, listen, we we can make a lot of money if we sell uh, if, if, if we sell articles, you, you buy an ad, you get an article. And I said, no, no, I don't like that. It's really dirty. And you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> not high, what high quality people do. Anyway, he talked me into it. That magazine was out of business within two years because what, what ended up happening is the reader, the credibility of the magazine went down because the readers all knew that it was paid advertising. They figured it out especially when you see the same person over and over and over again, it's like, why are they keep doing articles on this person? Right. I, I, um, I, I saw a situation one time with a collector who said, I don't, I don't understand why this, this painting is good. I don't understand why it's on the cover. It's I, how could they choose that as a cover image for the magazine? I, it's not worthy. And I, I said, well, why do you think he says, I think they're paying for it. And, right. and so I think that, you know, we assume that and nobody's ever going to notice, but people do notice. And mm -hmm. I think what it does is it destroys credibility, not only for, for the publication, if we were to do it, but it would also destroy credibility for the artist because it's like, ah, they're, you know, it's almost like using a prostitute. I hate to be so bold, but it's like, you know, that's just... <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that analogy. <laughs> I'll probably never use it again. I mean, it, it just. It, I was going to follow this up with something that now it might not be so appropriate. But, um, we'll go for it. Um, we can't dig any deeper there, than that anyway. Really, yeah. um, there are a few of our competitors that have gone through numerous owners over the years I've been in the publishing business with y'all um, because of, I think that is the reason that they have gone out of business, been resold, et cetera, et cetera, because they keep doing the same thing and they lose subscribers, they lose advertisers. Um, I mean, the consistency just isn't there. And certainly in the years that, that we've been in business, um, we have so many consistent advertisers um, that have been with us for years and years and years and years because they know it works. I guess well, we, that probably our claim to fame is the fact had, that you and I both have gone through a lot of tough times together. We've had some times when business was tough. 2018 uh, or tw I mean 2008 business was tough. Uh, it was very tempting. We walked away from 
probably over the course of 10 years, probably two or $3 million in revenue that we could have had. And it, and it is very tempting sometimes, but we just said, you know what, we're going to stick to it. And to your credit, you're like, don't ever go there, Eric. We're just not going to do that. And to Peter's credit, uh, I won't let it happen. And, and, and I don't want to do it either. And I think that it just over the long term, I feel, um, I feel clean about it. I, I don't, I just don't feel like, you know, when I had that other magazine, I just kind of felt like this isn't, this doesn't feel right. Right. So, well, anyway. and I think when you're, you know, when you're working with, and, and I realize it's just a title, but we call our marketing people, we don't call them sales reps. We call them marketing strategists, marketing specialists, depending on what their specialty is. Cause we have vendor specialists. We have a museum specialist. I mean, we have people who are very, very specifically good at what they're doing. And, um, and I think that's the difference between what we do and what a lot of other publications call their, their advertising people. Yeah. I, by the way, we're, we're not trying to trash anybody and we don't, no, no. we're not the kind of company that wants to gain by trashing other people. You know, if somebody else wants to do something else, we're not going to tell you you're wrong for doing it. And uh, how do people contact you if, uh, if they wanted to reach you? Uh, they can write me at a Brown. How simple can that be? At streamlinepublishing.com. Okay. All right. I will. I'm just, I thought I had it here. I, I wrote it in. Let me write it one more time. A N N E. No, no, just A Brown. Oh, A, A Brown. A Brown. <laughs> All right. At streamlinepublishing.com. Oh, I don't know where it went. Okay, I keep losing it. Okay, well, oh, there it is. Okay. A there Brown at streamlinepublishing.com. So, That's any cool. final thoughts? We've got maybe three or four minutes. I think the number one takeaway to me is um, putting down your goals. Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? Um, and that that's like the first key. If somebody calls me and tells me that they've, this is what their goals are. We're light years ahead and we can, we can start working. <laughs> yeah. That really makes a huge difference. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, um, first off, thank you for 10 years. Um, you, <laughs> I don't are, think 10 years, but it's been like nine and some. <laughs> nine and change. Okay. But I was at you. the very first plein air convention. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's been almost 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It has been. It's been great. It's been memorable. <laughs> yeah. We're having fun. <laughs> we do. We have, you know, and the thing that's also amazing is that uh, that most of our people have been with us longer or the same amount of time as I, and, and that speaks volumes to me. You know, where we we all are a really cohesive team that are all on the same page, which is yeah. pretty remarkable. Yeah, we've got a really terrific team. I'm very proud, proud yep. of you guys. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for, for doing this, Anne. And uh, how about thumbs up, a round of applause for Anne Brown? Oh, well, I was going to applaud you, but oh, no, okay. no need. Thank you, Anne. All righty. All right. Well, if you want to reach Anne, it's Anne Brown or a Brown at streamlinepublishing.com. Uh, Anne runs uh, our, our uh, advertising department. So she's the one who manages the seven people in the, uh, the, that consult with people. And also there's other team members who coordinate advertising and do all kinds of other things. And, and so I'm very grateful to have her on board. I, I just can't imagine ever having her go away. You're not allowed, Anne. you're not allowed. Okay. Well, uh, that's today's, uh, day number 162, 162 days in a row for you. And remember today at 3 p.m., Bob Rome is going to be uh, on. And 
And the one thing I want to just encourage you is we all tend to get uh, what would be the word seduced by the big names, the names that everybody knows, and, you know, the Scott Christensen's and the Jill Carver's of the world. And, and that's terrific. We are, we, uh, when we invite someone to be an artist in our platform of our video, we're looking for people who are the very best at a particular skill, the very best at teaching something, people who are very good at teaching, because just being able to paint and, and not being able to teach isn't all that important. You, you need somebody who can kind of combine those skills. And so once in a while, you're going to encounter somebody that you may or may not have known. Yesterday, we had an artist on and everybody was like, wow, she's incredible. She was such a good teacher. And so make sure that you don't just rule something out or don't rule something out because it's not your medium, right? You know, if you're not a watercolor painter and you're seeing a watercolor video come up, don't rule it out. You, I learned things watching a watercolor video. I'm not a watercolor artist yesterday, but I can apply it to my own work, things that, that can work for me. So you can do the same thing. I'm going painting today at uh, four o'clock. I'm going down to, to a place called Buttermilk Falls, which is a stunning, beautiful, wide uh, waterfall. I'm going to stand at the foot of the waterfall and, and paint it with my friend Judd Brown. And, uh, and we'll see how it goes. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully we won't have any rain. It's been raining and cold here for a few days. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember, leave a comment. Tell where you're from. Uh, we will be going into the comments. And tomorrow, we'll be giving away the easel brush clip, which is a clip that you can use uh, essentially to hold your brushes. It clips onto the side of your easel. And uh, you can. it's a product that I came up with uh, years ago because I felt the need. I kept dropping my brushes, and I wanted them right there where I could grab them. And it's right there. You just it's, and by the way, the clip is super strong, so you can use it for an umbrella holder as well. It really stabilizes your umbrella. I hang my plastic bag on it too. Anyway, uh, we'll be giving that away tomorrow for comments. Let's make sure you comment. Thank you for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher, fine art connoisseur, plein air magazine, fine art today, plein air today, realism today, and American watercolor. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.